And next up we have Jeffrey Rodriguez from the Social Security Administration. And he All right, good morning everybody. Uh, Trish, thank you for the opportunity and it's always, uh, I find it at some point hopefully um, most of us connect with each other through the caregiving. I had the great experience and privilege of taking care of my grandfather uh, in in his uh, the last two three years of his life and so one who provides any type of caregiving understands how much of yourself and so when Trish when you're talking about you know taking those opportunities I remember uh, providing the respite for my mother providing that opportunity for her to get away and taking care of yourself is so important and so I'm gonna touch from kind of a different angle of caregiving which is Social Security and that would be the information that um, you, you probably, in one of the points, and, and I so strongly agree with you, Trish, is know the benefits that you're eligible to, know what's out there for you. And so from Social Security, I brought a few things here uh, this morning, SSI, disability, and there's some more things out at my table, which is on the very far, almost straight out of the door and down towards the end. Um, and, and do take a look and take those with you once you have an opportunity. So as we go through, let's take a look. There's a couple tools that I always let people know. These are super important for you to know because uh, although I'm here today and I was here yesterday and a few people did take the opportunity to come up speak to me. Um, also, once we're kind of out of here, have you ever tried to get a hold of Social Security? Um, it can be a little difficult. We know that. There are 65 million people receiving Social Security. Uh, and so if everybody's trying to get a hold of us, you can imagine people that are trying to get on, people that have questions. So we know the phones get busy. The, the offices, uh, we have over you know several hundred people that come each day trying to do some type of business. So we know there's a backup. And so what we did is we put a lot of our resources in into our website. Our website is a fantastic website now, and I really, really mean that. Before, a few years ago, I, I didn't really enjoy trying to find information on the website or show people where to get information. And so as we've re-engineered it within the last couple years, um, I love it. When I'm gonna go out and speak on a subject that maybe I need to brush up on, I go to our external website, I don't go internally. And that speaks a lot of what we've done now with our, our website. Very easy to use, a lot of uh, user-friendly things where you're just clicking on them, advancing, clicking into the information. FAQs on the bottom right there, I think is a fantastic way to kind of take a look at it. Some of those questions that you're not even sure what to ask. If you go into the program, we have it divided by program, so you can go into disability and then click into and just kind of scroll through and start clicking into each one of those and trying to find out well what is it that this means and what does that mean follow the links if you're following the links it's going to open you up into other information and that'll just take you right along so I, I strongly suggest using our website um, when you're ready to do so so as I stated when we take a look at our uh, the number of people that we're serving and you can see there uh, over 65 million people and how it's kind of divided between SSI and uh, the mixture of retirement and disability. When we talk about entitlements or Title II, that's the, the majority of people that we serve. Um, but SSI is kind of a unique um, benefit within itself. So let me kind of take a look at both disability programs. There's two different programs when we talk about Social Security disability. Um, the first is the entitlement, or which one do I have up? Yeah, the entitlement. And that is those that have paid in. If you've worked and you have sufficient quarters of what we call currently insured, it means within a rolling window of 10 years, do you have five years paid in within that 10 year rolling window? So that when someone applies for disability, we're looking at if you meet that and you're insured, then you potentially could be eligible to it. Once someone meets the eligibility, we'll talk about the process in a second, then you're, you're looking at um, receiving a benefit that's really intended for the length of disability which we know will most of the time and what we're really kind of looking at is something that's going to be lifelong and that's why it's so difficult initially to become eligible to it so you have the disability which is that which you pay into called an entitlement or title II, and then you have SSI so we just like to make things difficult so regular um, 
Social Security Disability as SSDI, as you see there, and someone was extremely creative, and then when they named the disability for SSI, it's SS, where is it, SSD, SSI, it's like, it's ridiculous, it's, it, they're almost identical. Um, so SSI, DI is the, the other. So it just, it meshes, people get confused, but SSI is a form of a needs-based program. So disability you pay into, an entitlement, SSI is a needs-based, meaning if you meet the criteria. And we'll go over those and you can always ask questions. And I'm not gonna go through all of these, but if you come by the table and you wanna find out the difference, I'll spend the time with you, or during the Q&A you can ask some of these differences. And they are a little bit different in the way that they're handled. SSI requires a lot of hands-on work and becomes very cumbersome for people receiving that type of disability through SSI it's and it's difficult because one you meet the requirements which are um, very low income um, below roughly somewhere around $800 or less you can't have any other type of income and the resources for a single two person are 2,000 3,000 for a couple so when you look at those very few people are going to meet those that's why when we looked at that graph it's a very small segment of that 65 million people that are receiving SSI there's only two ways that you can receive SSI, which are disability, and the other is age, age 65 or older, that meet all that same criteria. So we'll, we'll kind of jump through here. Um, if you have children that have a disability at age 18, what you want to do is apply for the SSI because you're establishing a federal level disability. If you establish a federal disability prior to age 22 for the child, whenever the child's parents receive any type of Social Security entitlement, um, retirement, disability, or if they, pre if they die, then the child would have survivors on that record. And part of that is they have to meet that requirement, receiving uh, or, or being allowed uh, for the disability prior to age 22. So at age 18 is kind of that first initial point and get them on SSI because now we're looking at them as an individual, as an adult uh, an individual. So even if they had a disability as a child and for a short term maybe SSI or for whatever reason, you still have to reestablish it as an adult at age 18. And that would be kind of those major differences there. So once someone receives disability, the entitlement, after two years, they're entitled to Medicare. Um, if someone receives SSI, then automatically they're eligible to Medi-Cal or Medicaid nationwide. So you have two types of Medicare programs. Through the entitlement, then someone is eligible to Medicare after two years. If they have SSI, then it's immediate, they're eligible to Medi-Cal here in the state of California or Medicaid nationally. So let's kind of just look at, um, just because of time, and I want to allow you to ask the questions that you want, I'm going to go to here. If someone is receiving SSI, if you put in the search engine on our website and you put in there spotlights or SSI spotlights, this will come up. This is, for me, the best. It's, it's equal and better because it's, it's the current information. But I have a few books left, and we didn't do one in 2018, we did in 2017. And this is a complete SSI manual. It takes and talks about everything that we have in SSI. Um, it's a great program uh, manual to have. Uh, when I go to organizations, when I'm talking to groups, I'll leave it as a resource for that program. But you can have one as an individual as well. As I said, I have a few left. Uh, I brought a stack and they've been depleted through yesterday. I would imagine today they'll go. So if you're here and want to take one, I have two with me and I have a few at the desk um, remaining. And so use the spotlights and it will answer almost any question. How does resource
resources work? How do I um, apply for, or how do I um, file for this, or how do I report that? What is, um, how do trust work? And it goes into detail of everything. And so I strongly recommend anyone that's on SSI, you should almost have this set on your computer as a favorite to go back to. Um, really, really should. Um, as far as 2019, um, I don't know what I have up there, but I'll, I'll just share a couple things that are important to know right now. So every year there is what's called substantial gainful activity. If someone has Title II disability, there is an income limit that that individual can work and earn and up to that limit. And the limit for 2019 is $1,220. And the individual amount of SSI that someone is eligible federally is $771 in 2019. What happens is each state has the opportunity to either supplement that with something or not supplement it. Here in the state of California, we do have a supplement to, to the SSI. And so it's about $200. So it raises that level uh, above $800, closing in on $900 for the SSI individual. And then the neat thing that just happened that they passed, and this will come into effect, I believe it's spring or somewhere around in uh, the early summer, I, I believe it's either April or May, somewhere around in there, the state of California has now permitted, which was never allowed before, if someone is on SSI, the food stamp, or what's called SNAP now nationally, is similar, they we use the exact same criteria and that's the, the needs-based program. We use the same exact resource limits, income limits, and everything. And so if someone was receiving SSI, they are not permitted to receive the food stamps. Well, this has now changed because several states went through, and rightfully so, it never made sense to me. How are you gonna say because they have a financial um, benefit to receive nationally to receive for housing or whatever the needs are but you're going to take away the the nutrition part of it never made sense to me as a, a, a social worker and so now what we've seen is finally the state of California saying you can receive both and this is huge so now they're going to be able to receive both which is excellent they don't have to choose do I want the food and I just live with someone that allows me to no I'm now able to contribute towards the housing and other needs and have the nutrition side that's a big thing here in the state of California other states already have that which I'm, I'm glad that they do and so the limits I have a fact sheet um, that you can look over at the desk there or afterwards uh, I have a couple copies I'm, I'm more than willing to hand out as well and I'll stop there and hand it over and then we can allow time for questions so thank you